The Stephen J. Sharp Center for Mental Health Innovation is a philanthropically funded center. It started out as a center for ADHD research, and with more donor commitment and expanded scientific discovery, we really have grown to appreciate all facets of mental health. The center has 11 world-renowned scientists and over 80 staff and trainees really working together to understand developmental psychopathology. Faculty at the CMHI are recipients of some of the largest federally funded grants to study child and adolescent development and mental health. The CMHI covers an amazing breadth of science. Investigators work across many areas of discovery, including looking at behavior, nutrition, environment, genetics, physiology, and brain imaging to understand child mental health. We start at conception, studying pregnant mothers all the way through young adulthood using these multimodal methods to really understand markers of risk. The goal is to understand trajectories of mental health problems and ways in which we might intervene to improve human lives. Maternal mental health is actually a key predictor and factor related to child health and outcomes. We know that children whose mothers were depressed during pregnancy or postpartum are at higher risk of mental health challenges themselves. One way to reduce that impact on infants and children is to start by improving maternal and parental mental health. We've taken those results to actually inform the development of a intervention that has both mindfulness and cognitive components to it that we call Center M. My research focuses on looking at the early environments and how these early environmental factors shape the developing brain and child behavioral development. We look at factors including the mother's nutrition, her mental health. We also look at substance exposure and other environmental exposures and to see how those things shape the developing brain and then later behavior and risk for psychopathology. We collect things such as blood from the mother, urine, hair. But importantly, we also are able to collect delivery samples here at OHSU. That allows us to look at the placenta and actually what's happening in that placenta during that pregnancy. So it allows us to look at things at a molecular level, um, which is unusual in, in human studies. To measure child brain development, we use methods such as an MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, and we can look at the structure of the brain during development, but also the function of the brain during development, how different parts of the brain communicate with each other. We also do something called EEG, where you place a cap to measure the surface electrical activity in the child's brain. And we can do that in partnership with the different behavioral assessments so we can see the child's brain in action during these behavioral assessments. My, my research is primarily focused on cognitive brain and emotional processes and their development through childhood and early adulthood with a primary focus on mood disorders and suicide prevention. We know adolescence is a really important time for brain development. It's also a really important time when mental health problems are emerging and we see a risk for suicide increased and substance use. And the key takeaways are really that risk starts early during childhood. And we've learned that for the problems like with cognition and sleep, that when those happen in childhood, sometimes that they can predict suicide risk in adolescence. We use apps on cell phones and wearables so that we can look at changes in things like mood and sleep and cognition. This gives us kind of changes in real time that we're able to see that are dynamic and that we can identify risk factors that are modifiable and that we can target. It's really important to focus on individuals that are at the highest risk and, and really be able to identify warning signs early. We have a crisis in child mental health right now. Rates of depression and suicide are just staggering. I think it's becoming increasingly important to study child mental health. By the time children turn 18, about half of them have had some type of mental health disorder. What we're trying to do is target the most impactful intervention and prevention strategies and also help to inform public policy so that we know how to best invest our resources. Findings have informed policy and, and clinical guidelines across like more than 20 countries. One of the other things that the center is really focused on is thinking about how we more precisely diagnose and treat children. We're really thinking about that critically in the center, trying to evaluate, are there predictors of who's gonna respond best to what treatment at what point in their life? And really thinking about not only the diagnosis, but the actual whole person and how you make those determinations. 
we've worked with some of the other collaborators at the CMHI to develop algorithms that might help us predict at the beginning who needs to go into what intervention. So all in all, I think it helps make preventive interventions more accessible, more integrated, as well as more sustainable as a model of care in our, in our state and in our country. I think the future for the Center for Mental Health Innovation is bright. We have incredible scientists, staff, and students really committed to mental health. Everybody there wants to make a difference. It's why people come to work there. I don't know of any other site in the nation that's doing all of this type of work, and it makes us really unique. Thanks for watching, but now an important disclaimer. The content of this video is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Viewers should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice for any medical condition they may have and should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions.